Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs and welcome back to Skyblock in 116. I hope you guys are having a good day. Today, I'm back in Skyblock. It's been a little while, I've been taking it a little easier this week. But today we have some very exciting projects to try out. In particular, I'm going to make a better zombie pigman farm than I have ever made before. It's actually going to be relatively simple, but we're going to make it more efficient than ever by building it at the bottom of of the nether and in order to do that we're going to take advantage of some new 1.16 nether stuff specifically these guys the weeping vines because weeping vines are of course something that we can grow downwards and climb in the same way that you can regular vines or the new twisted vines or a ladder or something like that and so to start off with I think it's going to be worth trying to grow a bunch of weeping vines in an area that is safe enough for me to grow stuff and I'm going to try and harvest a few of these. Let me first check out whether or not I can harvest a bunch of these using shears. They can be attached to the underside of any block, doesn't have to be a nether specific block and I'm hoping that we'll be able to harvest a bunch of these at a time. I got my set of shears that I crafted the other day and yes with a set of shears it looks like you can multiply them which is very very good news because I need to grow myself a whole lot of these and if we ended up growing a bunch of them in the wrong place and then breaking them and losing them I would not really have a guaranteed way of getting more other than growing more crimson stuff so I think it's going to be essential to have a supply of these in waiting just in case we end up losing them to the void because the void in the nether is where we are bound today and so I think I'll tuck a couple of these in here just so I don't end up losing them. So I need to grab a bunch of bone meal and I will probably end up putting putting away most of the stuff that I'm wearing or holding because we really won't need a huge amount of tools or anything like that and if I drop into the void I don't really want to lose any of the stuff I've got on me. None of it is especially precious but it was just you know one of those things that kind of a pain to obtain if we don't have a whole lot of stuff to begin with. So I'm going to put all of my stuff in here just throw all of the tools and things in there probably take a couple of the potatoes and stuff with us. We'll bring some bone meal we'll throw the armor in there going to keep the gold helmet just in case we end up spawning any piglins but I think we should be fine arrows and stuff are not the biggest of concerns. What we are going to keep with us is some torches for spawn proof a few blocks, some slabs, the weeping vines, a little bit of food and a shroom light for lighting as well because we want to make sure that this area at the bottom of the void is well lit to avoid any initial spawns. Gonna sleep through the night to make it day in the overworld and then we're gonna head over to the nether. Hopefully this won't take too long and we'll be able to get back to the overworld before nighttime. Not that nighttime is really a concern right now but <laughs> anyway let's make our way over to the nether portal. I'll need to do something about this bridge maybe later in this episode maybe a little bit later on when we're prettifying the pathways between all of these islands. On second thoughts, I am going to bring a pickaxe with me and just leave it in this chest here in case I need to remove some of these blocks a little bit later. Because what we're going to be doing here is setting up a row of bottom half slabs coming out from this block here. And we need to have two sections of weeping vines dangling down from this. Because the bottom half slabs here are going to be able to grow weeping vines from below them like so. But nothing will end up spawning on top of those. So this should hopefully be a fairly safe environment and we're going to spam these weeping vines with bone meal until I can be confident they've reached the level of the void and it does seem like they are growing pretty far down but I have a feeling you can still bone meal them even after they've reached the level of the void I don't think they're going to go down any lower than that but we will have to see but anyway the reason for two sets of weeping vines grown here is that we need to place blocks on the outside of one of them that is the way we're going to be able to make sure we can build a platform down that low in the world but it's going to be a little bit difficult to do that if we only have one set of vines to carry us downwards so I think it's going to be important to have a second set of vines opposite that that we can place the blocks against instead of having to finagle our way outwards and potentially fall. And this is the point where I get a little bit scared, but I think we are all set here. So I can start descending. I'm going to put my coordinates on just to make sure that I can see whereabouts we are in the world. And if we end up falling into the void, then hopefully we're not going to lose all that much. But it definitely gets a little dark down here and I can see the end of the vines roughly a few blocks down from here. Okay, so this is the point at which I have to finesse it ever so slightly, make sure I can see the hitbox across from me of these other weeping vines and whoa yeah there we go okay that was a little bit risky but we made it and now we can start placing slabs 
a little bit lower down. Now, I'm not entirely certain if these are full block, like top half slabs or bottom half slabs. That one seems like a top half slab. So I'm going to place a light source on top of that. I brought some torches just to make sure that we don't get any zombie piglins spawning down here. In the meantime, I can hop down onto that slab and we can try and place a bottom half slab as low as we possibly can in the world. That is a bottom half slab there. We'll try one even lower. I can't quite see the wireframe of the, <laughs> the hitbox of those weeping vines, but there we go down there. That is a bottom half slab, basically as low as I can get in the nether, unless, yeah, it doesn't look like we can place them any lower than that on these weeping vines. So that's as good as we're going to get. But from out here on these half blocks, making sure that we are building away from where those platforms are up there, because we don't want to impede the spawning of the zombie pigmen by anything that we're going to build further up. We are going to build out a little platform here that's going to be an area where the player can stand safe from spawns because this is all on slabs, on bottom half slabs. We're going to make sure we build out a, an area towards where the spawning platform is going to be for the zombie piglins. It's super dark down here in the void of the nether, but I think we're going to do pretty well here. And with that platform established, I can make my way back up to the nether portal. Whoa, a little bit risky there. And yep, crouch my way out of those because it's a one and a half block gap there. But that's all looking nice and stable. Very good didn't end up having to do too much falling into the void there <laughs> managed to avoid that and now we can go harvest a few more materials so that we can build out a spawning platform right at the lowest level of the world so here we are back in the nether with a few more supplies i brought with me a bunch of slabs and other building materials a couple of trap doors and some chests and we're going to start building out this platform the first trick however is going to be to build one block lower than we currently are because these vines were only able to get me so far down in the world and we cannot place a block at y0 which is going to be the lowest possible coordinate that we can reach in the void and the ideal place to build a very very efficient spawning platform even one block above that is going to mean that we get slightly less efficient spawn rates and so I have a little trick that we can try out here. I'm going to place a trap door there and then using a slab to get over the top of that I'm going to place a block adjacent to the trap door on the opposite side there and from that we're going to build up another slab which is going to give us a place to put another trapdoor. Then I need to go back to the overworld because I've forgotten I need three trapdoors for this and not just two. And back with another slab we're going to place that on the top half of that block there and we're going to place another trapdoor on the bottom half of the slab in front of me. Now we're going to open up this trapdoor and step into it, right click and that takes me down to a level where I can place a block underneath the level of that slab which means we can place a block lower down in the void than this platform of slabs I've been able to create so far. That block there is at Y1. And I set up the same thing on the opposite side, lowered myself down, and unfortunately I cannot place any kind of block underneath that trap door there. So this is basically as low down as we can get. Right now I'm standing on a slab at 0.5 and that trap door is at 0. a fraction and we are we are basically down as low in the void as we can get. But from here we can start to build out our zombie pigman spawning platform. I'm going to break the rest of the basalt and the trap doors here because we really don't need those now we have the layer of slabs. This is the area we're going to be starting from and we're going to build outwards at least 23 blocks so that we have a spawnable area that we can start out there for all of the zombie pigmen. At this point the most important thing is not to create any solid blocks down here. This entire thing is slabs for a reason because once zombie pigmen start spawning down here they're going to spawn in huge numbers and it's going to make it very difficult for us to do anything else with this platform especially since zombie pigmen attacked in this farm are going to become aggressive to the player and anything that spawns behind me here is going to get involved in that aggression very quickly. Once we've reached this point over here though we are going to want a safe way of attacking the piglins so I'm actually going to build this out a couple more slabs here just so we can keep this height but then here we're going to build out an area where the piglins actually step up a couple of blocks so that we can swipe at their legs and they won't be able to get over a barrier that we're going to build here but we'll still be able to keep eye contact with the ones who are spawning in the farm meaning that they'll continue to be aggressive to me the player. Eventually when I have enough iron for some hoppers we're going to have all of this output to a couple of chests on the side 
here, basically. But we're not going to worry too much about that right now. We're just going to wait until we get some hoppers that can be placed underneath these slabs. And in the meantime, I'll just use these chests for storage. They shouldn't spawn anything, so that should not be a compromise to my safety here. And I think we're probably going to work some cobblestone walls into this design as well to make doubly sure none of the piglins, including the baby piglins, will be able to get through. I'm thinking something like this should do the trick, maybe adding another row on top of that to make sure that the piglins cannot jump over because of the height of these slabs, but for now we can probably open this back up again so I can make sure I can prepare the rest of the platform back here. You'll also notice that the walls don't connect to these because they are slabs. If this was a full block, the piglins would be able to step up onto the connecting piece of that wall, hop up onto the wall and over the top to get me, but since we keep these as bottom half slabs they're not connected to the wall and there is no means for them to jump over so this should be pretty safe now the next thing we're going to do is really the most dangerous part now we've got this row of slabs established down here and we are building at y1 i'm going to build out a spawning platform for the piglins and we're going to make this a diamond shape for now because one of the options we have of destroying any regular piglins that spawn in here as opposed to the zombie piglins is to have a dispenser with a bucket of lava in the center that will just be able to burn any piglins who remain in the farm and the zombie piglins will be left unharmed. Only reason I'm not doing that right now is because I can't really spare the bucket of lava and I don't have enough redstone to craft a dispenser. But the diamond shape for the spawning platform is going to keep things nice and compact and believe me this platform is going to spawn plenty of stuff. Okay, this should now be an adequate spawning platform for the zombie piglins. As soon as I take that torch away, and the torch really wasn't doing much to prevent their spawns to begin with, but we should find that this platform populates with piglins and zombie piglins pretty much immediately once I step down to the end of this section over here. Once I am this far away from the farm, Yep, there they all are. And the pushing and shoving will quickly begin. The zombie piglins will start scaring the regular piglins away and you'll find that they end up falling off the platform here and there. But the one thing I need to be sure of is that I do not hit any of the piglins in this farm because some of them will be able to retaliate using crossbows. In the meantime though, I can take pot shots at the zombified piglins as long as I've got a good sword on me and they should all run up to this window here, allowing me to swipe away at them. And oh gosh, the noise from this farm is already kind of unbearable. <laughs> but just look at the sheer amount of mobs this is spawning. That is a truly phenomenal spawn rate and we can probably do something to prevent the mobs from falling off the platform if we're at all concerned about that aspect of the farm, but I really think that's not going to be a problem for us in a second or two. Now, useful though those Enderman spawns would be, I really do want to make sure they are eliminated from the farm. And I also have another concern, which is the spawning of ghasts. If ghasts end up spawning on this platform, I think it might be kind of difficult for them to do it with all of the other mobs around, but that might potentially constitute a problem. So <laughs> I think what I'm going to do is hop up here and build a half block roof using these slabs over the top of the farm to make sure that no ghasts are able to spawn within this area. But aside from that, I've got a bow and a stack of arrows and I've got my sword. We should be able to aggro these piglins. I've turned down the hostile mob sound slightly so I can hear myself think here. I think we are going to build a roof of slabs above the entire farm here, but it's going to have to go a little bit higher over the top of the killing area here. So we're going to build that up at this height and then we're going to return to this slightly lower height. We're also going to build the walls around the side here a little bit so that the piglins don't run off this platform while we are killing them. And hopefully I should be able to add in a couple more walls there and just a little bit lower down there. There we go. Okay, so if I do that on both sides, that should mean that any piglins we're actually attacking stay inside this area. And so with that taken care of, we're going to slab off the rest of the roof here, making sure that ghasts and endermen will not be able to spawn in this area. Thank you. 
And I didn't quite bring enough slabs to finish the job, but I did bring a crafting table, so we'll pop one of those down here with something over the top of it, like a slab there, just to make sure that we have something I can use to craft, and maybe we'll be able to turn the last of these into slabs and that should finish the job there we go i was hoping that we might be able to make another sword or two while we're here but i think the point here is going to be to slab this whole thing over and we should have enough slabs there to finish the job oh not quite there's a couple of blocks either side there but that's no big deal i've got a few more materials back in the mainland that we can do something like that with and I've reconsidered a little bit here. I really don't think there's going to be a lot we can do to avoid the piglins. So I might need to make myself a shield to avoid stray crossbow bolts. But the main point here is going to be attacking the zombie piglins, which if we end up hitting one of those successfully, we can pretty much guarantee we'll be able to madden the rest of them. There we go. That noise is all too familiar and a little bit scary at this point, but it looks like we've got it. We should be able to attack all of the zombie piglins that come into this area, and I'm not seeing any of them coming over the top here, which means we have done it. There we go. We got the gold skin advancement. We are slashing away at them, and they're already leaving those wonderful golden drops that we're going to need for the remainder of our time in Skyblock. Those golden drops are going to be very, very useful for the next little while. We'll need some gold to make golden apples to cure zombie villagers. We'll just need gold as a general crafting component as well. And looks like what we are mainly left with here is piglins who are going to be picking up those stray gold ingots for now and probably chucking some useful resources down on the ground. And for now, it looks like the piglins are actually a little bit too scared of the zombie piglins to attack me. So it seems like for the most part, I'm not actually getting shot all that much behind here. And I haven't even seen one of them draw a crossbow and finish firing yet. Maybe once they all calm down inside of there, we'll be able to focus on picking up whatever they drop for me. But for now, the zombified pigmen are lining up to die in droves. And once we get some hoppers underneath here, we should be able to harvest all of these gold drops without worrying about the piglins picking them up at all. Not only that, but getting a magma cream farm on the go so that we can get ourselves a decent amount of magma blocks will mean that we can turn this thing into a zombie piglin only spawning platform and that will be a lot easier to handle. Here is another option though, using the same trick that we used a little bit earlier, I might be able to sneak my way underneath this platform if I can make a couple more trap doors. If we place one there and there, if we sneak underneath this platform of slabs, are we able to pick up any of the drops that land on top of them? It looks like we might not be able to. So we really are going to be relying on some hoppers feeding into that chest in order to collect all of the drops here. But in order to respawn some zombie pigmen, all I need to do is run to the back here, wait for them all to respawn. They should probably aggro on me as well. Yep, there we go. And then I can run to the front here, dip down into this little dugout and start attacking them for the drops. Most of the time when we're using this farm though, you can't stand too close to this trap door, otherwise they will get you occasionally. But most of the time when we're standing here, the piglins will be too afraid to run up to the area where all of the zombie piglins are, which should mean that we're able to sneak in close enough to get some of the drops, as long as I don't get a little bit too greedy and end up taking damage from the zombie piglins there. But this is looking like a very secure and very productive farm. Just waiting on a couple of tweaks that will turn it from a fairly easy starter farm into an absolute monster later in the series. So I would call this farm a pretty resounding success. Not only that, but we have a fantastic way of getting down into the lower areas of the nether now thanks to the fact that weeping vines are so useful and that's going to be perfect for future farms imagine applying this sort of spawning rate to hoglins in a crimson forest or even endermen in a warped forest we won't even need to go to the end to start farming ender pearls we'll be able to do it right here in the nether so as far as drops from this farm go so far we are doing pretty well i think we've got a decent amount of rotten flesh we've got some gold nuggets whatever gold nuggets i can grab through this partition and i really wish there was a way of getting in there and getting a little bit more but i have a feeling that the piglins in there might be a little bit angry with me at this point. I've resorted to using the zombie piglins gold swords so that I can continue fighting them because all of the stone that I was crafting swords into had to be used to slab over the roof, but I think some of these have some pretty decent enchantments on them. Some of them have smite and sharpness, and those are proving incredibly useful when they don't just break over the zombie piglins' knees like that. And I now have enough gold for eight gold ingots, which is going to be 
plenty to make our first gold apple and hopefully in a future episode we'll be able to cure a zombie villager. We still do need to get brewing stands on the go for that which is going to mean heading over to that nether fortress tower and getting ourselves some blaze rods but I have faith that we're going to be able to do that pretty easily and in future we can use some of the mechanics of spawning at this low level to create some really very powerful farms here in the nether. But my last sword has just broken and I don't really have the stuff on me to make any more so I think we're going to step away from this farm for now and that's probably where we're going to leave this episode of Skyblock 116. I do hope you've enjoyed taking a look at this incredibly powerful zombie pigman spawning platform with me and maybe this will be useful to you in your own Skyblock worlds as well. I don't doubt it. Let me know if you enjoyed this episode in the comments. Leave a like for me while you're there. Subscribe if you want to see more and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.